Welcome back. Uh, this one's gonna be, gonna be kind of a short one. Uh, so in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about controlling for variables. We can close back doors by controlling for certain variables. We take out, we take what we can explain with those variables and we subtract it out. Everything that's left over uh, is basically variation that no longer has that back door in it. And so we can look at the relationship. And if we've closed all the back doors, we can say that we have identified the causal effect of X on Y. So I'm just gonna talk about a, a specific version of controlling. Uh, that tends to come in very handy. Because one of the problems with controlling is that you have to actually measure all the controls. You have to be able to know what the data is in order to be able to control for it, see what it explains, and therefore take the residual. Now, the problem with that is that there's often going to be some sort of unobserved variable, some variable that's on a backdoor path that you need to control for, and yet you can't measure it. You can't, for whatever reason, it's not in your data. Uh, either somebody forgot to collect that data or didn't think it was important, or maybe it's something that literally cannot be measured. Now, sometimes this is going to cause you a lot of problems, but when you have something called panel data, you can do something called fixed effects. Now, what fixed effects is, is it is when you are controlling, but you're not controlling for a particular variable, you're controlling for the individual themselves. I mentioned panel data. What panel data is, is you have, are observing the exact same person multiple times. And so if you control for that person's individual identity, what you end up with is you're controlling for everything about that person that is fixed within that person, whether or not you've measured it. We used the example before of the effect of education on earnings. Now, there are lots of things that might affect your education level and also affect your earnings. For example, your ability, uh, your grit, we can't measure those things. However, if we observe you multiple times and we control for your own identity, that means that we're controlling for all the things that are fixed about you which could very well include a lot of those unobserved variables like grit or intelligence. So this is gonna be able to solve a lot of problems for us because often it's, it's, it is the case that we can't observe all the things that we wanna control for. Now, the nice thing about fixed effects is it's the exact same thing as when we just regularly controlled for variables. We just take the average of our X and our Y within each individual subtract that out because that's the part we explain with individual and then focus on the residual. And when we've done that, we've controlled for everything that is fixed about that person and therefore all of those possible back doors that are fixed within that person. Now, I keep repeating the phrase fixed within that person because that is important. This doesn't magically close all back doors. In particular, anything that is about a person or whatever the thing or it is, it could be a country, it could be a uh, company, anything that's about that person that changes over time, we are not going to be controlling for that. So with the doctor's visit example, right, we might observe you multiple times, whether or not you're sick and whether or not you've been to the doctor's office recently. And if we control, if we use fixed effects, that will control for everything that's fixed about you. So your general level of health, fixed effects would handle that. But things that change over time, that would not handle that. So fixed effects by itself would not be controlling for how sick you were before you went to the doctor's office. So with that in mind, let's do a quick demonstration of how fixed effects works. First. Let's see it in action in an animation. So this is the exact same procedures with controlling for a variable. We'd start with our raw data. We see what we can explain with the individual. We take the average of X within each individual and then subtract it out. We then take the average of Y within each individual and subtract it out. And then we analyze whatever we have left. This is again, taking out everything that we can explain by the individual. This means effectively, by the way, that we are only looking at variation that occurs within the individual over time, which also means that maybe if there's something important about the difference between people that we want to be including, we will be controlling for that as well. So this is also called an, a within estimator because we are only looking at variation within an individual person. Uh, let's carry this out. So this is the exact same procedure as when we controlled for a variable. Uh, this time we're going to be using data from the Gapminder data set. Uh, and this is a data set of countries, and we're going to be interested in looking at the relationship between that country's GDP per capita and their life expectancy. Now, if we just look at the raw relationship, you notice it's, of course, very positive. But there might be a difference specific to each country that might explain both their life expectancy and their GDP per capita, and therefore be on a back door that we want to control for. So we're going to use fixed effects. We're just going to control for the identity of each country. We're going to use that, do that just as we did before. We're going to do group by on the variable we want to control for, which in this case is country, our, ident our I individual identifier. We're going to get the residuals by taking our variable and subtracting out the mean within each country. Uh, and then we are going to ungroup the data. 
And then finally, we're going to look at the relationship between those residuals, which is a lot lower. So it looks like that really positive 0.8 relationship, some of that was probably due to the fact that higher GDP per capita is going to improve your life expectancy. Some of it was also going to be due to the fact that there's just differences between countries and some of them are, say, more developed and might be likely to get more of both. And so we took out that part that was specific to the countries and we just left the variation within countries over time. So this is basically saying if a particular country is changing in its life expectancy or in its GDP per capita over time, we would expect that particular country's life expectancy to change in the same direction. And there's a correlation of 0.6 on that. All right, that's all about fixed effects. I'll see you next time.